You're welcome back to the gavel. It's nearly five weeks to the general elections and campaigns, rallies and high level politicking are at an all time high. However, governance must go on. And lest we forget, the 2019 budget is before the National Assembly for input and passage. Lawmakers would have to balance working on the 2019 budget with their political aspirations during this election season. And the national budget in the last three years has been a subject of dispute between the executive and the legislature for a myriad of reasons, ranging from allegations that the legislature inserted new projects into the budget and the legislature accusing heads of government agencies of failing to attend budget defense sessions. Will this budget cycle be any different from what we've seen in the last three years of this administration? We spoke with a federal lawmaker, Senator Adamu Aliru, to get his views on this. I wouldn't say there was a criminality between the executive and the legislature. Rather, there could be some minor disagreements, which is normal in democracy. And um, when the president said that uh, we are delaying the budget, we said, yes, we are not passing the budget simply because your ministers and heads of extra ministerial departments have not come to defend the budget. How do you expect us to pass the budget when your nominees or your appointees have not come to defend what they have proposed? It is the responsibility of the ministers or the heads of agencies to come to the National Assembly and de defend the budgetary proposals. And they didn't come in time. I could remember uh, a particular minister uh, uh, delayed the passage of the budget for more than three months. The National Assembly waited for him to come. He didn't come, and he did not even allow the heads of uh, establishments under his ministry to come and defend the budget. So you don't expect the National Assembly to pass the budget when uh, there was no defense. Equally, uh, the ministers themselves admitted that they did not come. So it was not the fault of the National Assembly. It was rather the fault of the executive for not appearing before the National Assembly to defend the budget. I'll, I'll give you an example. And the issue of padding you're talking about, mm -hmm. or insertions, the National Assembly is not a rubber stamp. You don't expect the National Assembly just to pass the budget as proposed by the executive. We have to do our constitutional responsibility. And the Constitution has mandated us to look at the budget, every figure, word by word, uh, 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 to ensure that uh, there is equity and justice when it comes to the application of funds. After all, politics is uh, all about allocation of scarce resources. And these resources are allocated through the budgetary provisions. And if my constituency is not adequately taken care of, I have to make noise and to ensure that um, the interest of my constituency is accommodated in that budget. And there could be a situation where the National Assembly will add something in the budget. I'll give you an example. In 2015, or 20, yeah, 2015, when we came, when the budget came to the National Assembly, we look at the uh, proposals that came from the executive uh, under the Ministry of Works, Power, and Housing. We discovered that uh, under the road rehabilitation and construction, close to about 50% of the entire budget was concentrated in the southwest. And we made it clear that, look, all zones are equal. And um, we cannot allow this budget to go without making amendment here and there. When we started tinkering with it, of course the executive said no. They disagreed. We said no. We are representing our people and we have to ensure that uh, uh, the interests of our states, the interests of our zones is represented. We cannot allow this budget to go just like that. And that's exactly what happened. We took the whole amount, splitted it, distributed it equally among the uh, six geopolitical zones. And that's why we have peace. Nobody is crying. Senator Lira. So we may have disagreement, mm -hmm. but eventually the budget was passed. Senator Lira, I want to draw you back to the, to the 2018 budget. And yeah. Because we know 
when the 2018 budget was presented and then the National Assembly passed, the president was very categorical in, in, in raising concerns that the National Assembly removed some critical infrastructure and projects from the 2018 budget and inserted its own projects into the budget, which were not, you know, at, at the end of the day, would not augur well for the policies and the plans of this administration. So when this kind of things happen, people wonder what sort of relationship does the executive and the National Assembly have, bearing in mind that both arms of government are from one political party. Shouldn't these issues have been trashed out before the budgeting process started, bearing in mind that the executive and the National Assembly are majorly, majorly from one political party? Admittedly, that should have been an interface between the National Assembly and the executive before, you know, bringing the budget to the National Assembly so that uh, all areas of disagreement will be sorted out. Unfortunately, it has not happened. I could remember when I was in government in 20, 2008, when I was minister, um, before, the, we, the, before we take budget to the National Assembly, we contact the leadership of the National Assembly we contact the chairman of committees. We have interface with them to ensure that uh, uh, whenever the budget is passed, there will be no serious disagreement or serious tampering with the budget. Whatever interest they have, we we'll try to accommodate it so that we we'll have one budget that is jointly agreed by both the executive and the legislature. And it worked well. That's why during Moriarty's time, there was no disagreement whatsoever between the legislature and the National Assembly. Sorry, between the legislature and the presidency. Everything passed through uh, seamlessly. But unfortunately, we don't have that kind of uh, arrangement now. Why? Uh, well, uh, everybody has his own style. And that's why a budget comes, if it is not in consonance with the constituencies of the various senators or members of the House of representatives, there are bound to be some disagreement. We propose this to the leadership. We said, let them go and meet the executive. This is the way this should, should be done. But that has not been done. And um, uh, unfortunately, if we don't do it, we'll continue to have this kind of disagreement. We'll continue to have this kind of uh, delays, this kind of complaints. It is needless. I agree with you that uh, uh, both chambers of the National Assembly are controlled by one political party. And um, whatever comes, particularly uh, budget, uh, it should pass without any delay whatsoever. Yes. And, and, and another you know, interesting thing is the, the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been passed all these years. The Eighth Assembly comes, divides the bill into four sections, passes the Petroleum Industry Governance mm -hmm. Bill to the, to the presidency, mm -hmm. and he declines assent. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder, in the whole process of passing the PIGB, the, we know the presidency, the executive, were, would have taken part in the process and the public hearings. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the, the, almost the fourth year of this administration at the National Assembly, that bill is still not passed. Yes. And there's a likelihood that the PIGB or the PIB would not be passed in this, in, in this eighth assembly under this administration. Well, unfortunately, there is a lot of politics that is being brought into the PIP bill. And the country is we, suffering we, we, from shouldn't be, we shouldn't be so. Uh, uh, PIB is a very important legislation. And um, uh, I wish there was no controversy. But various interests came into play during the passage of the, of the, of the bill. The oil companies were not happy with certain provisions. And they launched enormous pressure, serious lobbying. The communities are also not happy with certain provisions of the bill. They also launch their own assault on the bill. Um, the federal government too felt if certain provisions were passed into law, they would be sure change. Um, states government, governors too came in also started complaining about certain provisions on the bill. Uh, so to be honest with you, a lot of politics is being brought into the passage of the petroleum industry bill, and that's why it has suffered a lot. And um, uh, it is a country, eventually, that is losing. And I hope that uh, we will discard all interests and pursue what we call national interests so that this bill can be passed into law. I'm one of those that uh, believe that this should happen. 
at least this Eighth Assembly should take the courage of passing that bill, uh, narrowing down all kind of interests and sentiments and pass it into law. Would you have preferred if the executive, would, you know, there was the arm of government to even bring this legislation to the National Assembly? Would we have seen, would you have, the outcome, would it have been different yeah. if it was the executive to sponsoring the you, It is because it's a private member bill. That's why we have all these uh, controversies. If it had been uh, the executive bill, I'm sure it would have passed without any, uh, you know, without serious, uh, you know, controversy. Uh, but the sponsor of the bill comes from uh, oil producing states. Um, we don't know what prompted him to even bring the bill. It should have been an executive bill. A lot, a lot of us argued that this bill should have come from the executive instead of, of being sponsored by a member of the National Assembly. Um, it is a very important legislation that is supposed to uh, accommodate all interests and we believe that government is in the best position to accommodate all interests, whether political or otherwise. Now this is where we call it a day on this week's edition of The Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on thegavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.